Hello, Professor. Hey, Dinesh, how are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Professor. Great, great. So, you're working? Uh, yeah, Professor, I just did a use case diagram and sequence diagram of uh, some application. Very good, very good. So, did you, were you able to do it better after these lectures? Uh, yes, Professor, I did it, but I don't know whether it is perfect or not. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, the deal here is that, let me tell you one thing. So, say for example, there is a guy who is like, who knows that he is totally ignorant, right? Mm -hmm. So, say for example, there is someone who is totally ignorant. Let me make that guy, right? Let me make it red. So, this red person knows that he is totally ignorant. Right? So, he is standing yeah. in front of the fortress of knowledge. Right? And this, go this door is closed for him, right? Yeah. So he knows that there is something beyond these boundaries which he does not know. Right? Oh, okay. So one yeah. day he decides that, okay, I have to study, right? So he opens this door, right? And comes to, comes within the fortress, right? Oh. <laughs> now, what does he find? He finds Amazing. himself into another big hallway, right, where there are so many other doors, door of math, a door of English, a door of Hindi, a door of maybe physics, a door of chemistry, a door of science, yeah. a door of geography. He finds that all these doors are closed to him, right? So previously he has one ignorance level that he was ignorant. Now he has opened that one door and comes to a hallway where there are so many doors telling him that he is now more ignorant. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then, you know, one day he opens the door of computer science maybe, right? And as he opens the door of computer science, he finds himself in another hallway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there are so many doors, right? Which are closed. Yes, and he knows that now I don't know Angular, I don't know Ionic, I don't know React, I don't know <laughs> so many things, right? Yeah, so, this is a good study, Professor. So, so basically, the more you learn, the yeah. more you are ignorant, actually. Yeah. <laughs> right? So look, if somebody does not know computer science, he knows that, hey, I'm not a computer scientist, I don't yeah. know computer science, right? Wonderful. Right? So there's, there's like one ignorance for him that he does not know computer science, right? Yes, Professor. <laughs> so as he starts uh, studying computer science, comes to this hallway where computer science is present, right? Yes, so he, he knows now that, hey, man, I don't know Angular. I don't know <laughs> React, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know so many other things, so right? Many things, yeah. So it's a lot to learn. <laughs> yeah, and it is true that the more you learn, the more you become ignorant. Yes. <laughs> so, so we can tell so much, you know, so many things in this lecture, and then rest is upon you that you study and uh, build your knowledge in that area. Yeah, yeah. I have so many students, you know, who are like, you know, authority in their areas, and I'm very happy that and I sow the seed and you know, gave them the basic knowledge. Yes. Right. And uh, now they are doing good in their areas. Nice. That's right. Okay, great. So let's start our today's discussion. Mm. So we have uh, done so many diagrams. So we started with, uh, uh, we started with uh, user stories, right? You started with user stories, then from user stories, we uh, saw that we will make the wireframes, right? We will group the user stories in various actors, maybe in various uh, layouts, right? And then uh, by separating those user stories, we'll make the wireframes, right? Everybody's uh, good with this transition, right? So yes. once you have wireframes in your hand, you are like a little bit more confident that I have something to make now, right? So you have wireframes in your hands, once you have wireframes in your hands, right, then you write use cases. So use cases are connection between the principal who is, uh, you know, who is sponsoring that job 
and the developer right so you write use cases as you write use cases right you improve your uh, your improve your wireframes also you know this is kind of feedback right you uh, label the wireframe you you give headings to the wireframe that what is this wireframe about right how did you come to that wireframe then you uh, at the button and the links you will mention this thing that as you click this button as you click this link what is going to happen which wireframe is going to show up right so you have completed this feedback on you know uh, a recursive iterative process in which you know you improve your wireframes you improve your use cases right and ultimately those use cases and wireframes are ready you make the summary of these use cases like uh, this use case like an index and put on top of all the use cases now your use case file is ready right and once your use case file is ready your uh, wireframes are ready you hire a designer and you ask the designer that you know these are our wireframes give us a good design and then you know that uh, designer works with you and uh, designer gives you the mock ups of your project right this is like 3 4 5 months process depends upon the uh, you know uh, the width of the project right so uh, size of the project so basically uh, you have got your mock ups ready your your uh, use cases are ready then you write some scenarios right you write some scenarios which you are going to test right so for example uh, in my setting this is very important that a student should be able to register so this would be a scenario a student registering then a scenario that uh, you know i should be able to make a faculty a, met, a, a meta should be able to make the faculty a meta should be able to make uh, create an admin an admin should be able to create a class right an admin should be able to create a promo code so all these are various scenarios right scenarios are this thing that you know the practical way you are going to use your project right so basically you know you you write various scenarios these are the scenarios against which you are definitely going to test your project right and then you know in order to elaborate these scenarios a little bit more or use cases a little bit more you make sequence diagram you make sequence diagram right now sometimes it happens that you know the process is not still clear or there is a process you know uh, which is complicated and you have to explain it further so in such a case you make an activity diagram what do you make you make a make an activity diagram right are you getting me right so what is an activity diagram active out of all the uml diagrams activity diagram is the one which is nearest to something which is known to you all and which is flow chart right have you ever heard of flow charts when you were in undergrad yes sir right so basically you know flow chart right so basically activity diagram you can think of a flow chart but it is definitely different from a flow chart right so flow chart is like uh, the chart of a process you know but it may not have uh, you know uh, asynchronous activities or things like that so whereas activity diagram is you can say that interactivity it shows the interactivity between various modules of your project to deliver a task right so say for example i want to make the make an activity diagram of um, a registration process we much about right so let's see how does that activity uh, you know diagram work right got it guys Hello, everybody right so let's see that how can we make this activity diagram let me make it this free hand sketch i believe okay so every activity diagram normally starts with a start so can we format it so let let us have you know free hand Hmm. Okay, so this is start. 
uh, start is not that easy. So let us see that if I have some field object. I think I have only these few objects and I have to see to format them. So I want to make it fill. So rotate is there, link to math. There is no uh, format object thing, can you see? Rotate is there, but no formatting, right? Okay, let's, let, let me try to fill it manually. Let me pick different pen. So this is start symbol, right? So we start from here. So this is a start. So a student comes to the uh, a student comes to the uh, registration page, right? And uh, now he's uh, she's there, right? What are they going to do first of all? Now we will have an arrow, and with the help of this arrow, we will show the flow of the work. Okay, right. So this person uh, is on the uh, on the UI page, right? User interface page of the registration. There, he or she may spend some time to browse the page, right? There, you know, he will browse or search, right? So we can have a time lapse over here. So maybe we can show it as a box over here, and. Maybe we can put a cross here. And this is some indefinite time. So maybe find or search. So this is some time in which he or she will search for the content, right? So he will search and once he has searched the page, do we have yes today here? Yes, yes, got it, great. Okay, so search and then once he will search, he will definitely going to press the definitely going to press the registration button. So this is the action box. Right? Press the registration button. Right guys? So once he presses the registration button, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? Yes, please. Uh, sir, the arrows which we are making, uh, are those associations? Uh, this, these are not uh, associations typically, these are like transitions, right? We are okay. going from one action step to other ex another ex action step. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So press uh, registration button, right? And once you press, press the registration button, uh, not press registration button, before that we would have another stage, right? Let me just make space for that.
Hmm? And that is user will select whether they are going to audit or attend, right? They are going to audit or attend, right? And then they are going to press the registration button, right? As the, uh, no, there's one more thing to it, right? Look, I'm kind of, I've made this website and process all by my, myself and I'm forgetting these steps. So what is the another step over there? You enter the promo code, right? You enter the promo code also, right? So let me make that step also. So let me make space for that. So here, uh, what is going to happen? enter promo code right guys are you getting me by the way hello yes sir. okay good so once you enter the promo code let me delete this part and i'll make it again don't worry about it this is like kind of dangly right once you enter the promo code what is going to happen as i told you that this is like flowchart so here we are going to have all sort of if else right so basically, once you enter the promo code, uh, what is going to happen? That promo code would either be good and it should, it would I, uh, otherwise be bad, right? So, so here we will have that decision box. So we come over here, make an arrow like this, make a small diamond like this, right? And then from, and this is known as decision point or forking point, right? So from this forking point, there would be two ways to come here, right? And you go this way, right? So here you can have guard conditions. Do I have some text box? No, so here I'm going to have guard conditions. What is the guard condition? That promo code is good. Promo code is good. And the other guard condition would be promo code is bad. Right, promo code is good and then promo code is bad, right? If promo code is bad, you need to tell that what should you do, right? So once promo code is bad, what are you going to do? Right, here you will show a pop-up, right? Show pop-up. show pop up, right? Uh, it may also happen that you decide not to enter promo code, right? You, you decide not to enter promo code, right? This thing may also happen. So let me make space for that also. So we come back over here, right? And we can make a diamond over here. And here we have the card condition. Uh, 
Let me write it with hand. Enter promo code. Uh, the second condition would be second condition would be no promo code, right? You may not have a promo code. No promo code. So, so once there is, you have a promo code, then you are going to show the pop-up, right? This is, I think I should use uh, PowerPoint for this, but PowerPoint kind of, you know, drains my resources. My system starts like, uh, so show. There are uh, tools to create like this kind of diagram. I know, I know there are so many tools, but you know, I want to show you the native approach, right? So over here, right? And show pop up, and once you know you cancel pop up, you are going to go. You are going to go from here. You are going to go right over here. Right? So you will have again that condition that you have promo code or no promo code, right? Etc. And then if your uh, pop up is good. If your promo code is good, you will come back over here. Maybe here you can put another diamond. You know, once I subscribe to Smart Draw, right? Smart Draw gave me good choice. You know, I was able to make good diagrams, but then, you know, Smart Draw uh, starts sending me so many promotional emails that my entire email box got flooded with it. And now, you know, whenever I, I think to create a free account, I got, you know, a little bit repulsive about it and, you know, think four times before making, a, making an account. I have like 25,000 25,000 unread emails my, in my in, inbox because they're all coming from various promote, <laughs> promotion companies, right? So, and I don't want to pay for every software. I, I'm using so many software that if I pay for every software, it is like $500 a month for me and I don't want to pay this much amount, right? So, okay. So once you know you are here, so here this is a joining point, right? Let me let me just make some space for it. So promo code is good. Let me say that this is good only. These are known as guard conditions, right? And ultimately you are going to join. So now what is going to happen? Now you press the registration button, right? Register button. So you press the button. Right, you press the registration button. Yes, am I right? Making it right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you, you made that account also so you can verify it. So as you press the registration button, what happens? So one more thing over here. So if your promo code is good, right? If your promo code is good, then something will happen. What will happen? I missed that thing. Let me make it over here. What happens over here? That new prices are shown, right? So once promo code is good, you see 
new price right once promo code is get good you see new prices and then you know you go to the press registration button once you press the registration button what happens you show the you see the terms and conditions right you see, do you want me to show you so yes would you like us to sh uh, share your screen for a minute and show them uh, this process so that they can understand yes. it better let, let me stop share for a minute uh, where is stop share pause share stop share so stop share and let me give you the opportunity to, to share your screen yeah please share the screen and show them all the process right so that everybody can understand that what's going on okay so once you press the registration process uh, button what happens is that it shows you the terms and conditions yeah and the register button is converted to cancel button yes right press yes. cancel right so this is registration button right scroll down a little bit right so show the registration button and this is the promo code area right here you enter the promo code and then this is attend or audit and as you press the registration button right mm -hmm. that uh, terms and conditions are shown mm -hmm. and you can press cancel and once you press cancel you go back to the initial condition yeah right so press cancel right and once you press cancel you will go back right so so uh, and then you press the registration button uh, here again yeah again just want to show them all that how is how these processes are running and then you do the you read these conditions and you press the this uh, radio button i we agree right and by yeah. the way here there is one more thing if the fee is zero which is over here this is a free course if the fee is zero you can simply press register you know so you just press register right so this class is only open to audit for now please send request to audit the class right press okay right so you go back over there uh, the free class or uh... Paid yeah, this is the same free class, right? So here, you know, if you just select the audit button, mm -hmm. here, see that. Okay. So cancel and press audit, register. Yes, I right. And now you have selected audit, and then go down and agree and register. Right, welcome to this class. A right? copy of contact class details is emailed to you. Right, so yeah. basically press OK and confirm that you have got the email. Okay. Yeah, you can uh, unshare and then confirm. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I will check in mobile. Okay. so if you if you just you know see it a little bit from the perspective yes, of you, you got the email right yeah. so if you see it from the perspective of a computer scientist this is quite a complex use case we have implemented mm -hmm. right this use case involved not only uh, you know this uh, student who has just registered it it has the involvement of administrator who generated the promo code and now you can enter the promo code number 1 it also involves the promoter who will get paid once you use his or her promo code over here right and then it involves the 
uh, the administrator who actually uh, created this course, right? So basically it is quite a complicated use case which from outside, from a you know, naive person's point of view might be very simple thing. But this is quite a bit of process you have to make because it involves so many different things. Can you understand this thing that, you know, not only various actors are involved, but various other entities are also involved. Okay, now go to some uh, uh, course, which is paid course. So this was the free course. So for example, this is, is it, this is also paid co a free course. So go to some paid course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is paid. Yeah, 200. Yeah, this is paid course. So if you press, for example, register, Right, so you will see these terms and conditions. You see these terms and conditions, scroll down. Right, and if we press I, we agree. Right, and then you know, this uh, there is no register button right away, there is pay with stripe button. Yeah, you press pay with stripe button, and once you pay with stripe button, this uh, uh, you know, pop up from stripe opens up. And it is providing you an opportunity to enter your uh, payment details. And these payment details are never going to hit our server. Right? These payment details are not never going to hit our server. These payment details are going to go to the Stripe server directly. Right? So basically, it is shown at the client end. And from client, it is going to go Stripe. Right? Who is compliant? and who is authorized to process such information from you, right? We are not authorized to keep this kind of information with us, right? So this information never hits our server, right? So it goes directly to the Stripe, but an information, you know, Stripe gives us a token for that. And against that token, we launch a request from our server side. And there we give the amount and basically this amount over here, whatever being entered over here, which is like paid $1.20, it should match with the amount coming from the server. And then, you know, Stripe process that, uh, you know, payment and finalize. Are you, are you getting me? Yes. Sir. Right. So basically, uh, these are the things which are going to happen. So just keep these things into your mind. And let us, you know, continue making the activity diagram with you, right? So please stop share. Right, and here we go. Uh, where I was, let me share screen, share my screen. Okay, coming back. So you press the registration button, right? Once you press the registration button, what happens? So one, one thing happens is that terms are shown. The other thing happens is the registration button converts to cancel buttons, right? The registration button, you know, becomes the cancel button, right? Have you got it? And there the user can read the terms and conditions. And here again, he can do two things. He can press the cancel button right he can press the cancel button this is the disruption to the uh, to the process right so there was one disruption over here when they entered the wrong uh, promo code so this was one disruption right by the way if you want to show a little bit better so this disruption is normally shown like this something like this just showing that this is some kind of 
disruption to the system. Are you getting me? And now another disruption may happen if the user presses the cancel button, right? So we come over here. And maybe we can fork from here. So fork from here, one fork will go for the cancel button. Press cancel. And in that case, this is a disruption. So you can show it something like this. Right, this is a disruption. And you can take control to this point. Right guys? You will be back to that position right in the page. And the other possibility is that he presses the radio button. So agree. Right? Once agree, what happens next? Yes. After we have to uh, click again the uh, registration button. Uh, no, it, so basically, you know, once yeah. agreed, it shows you uh, the signature. Yeah. yeah, it shows you the signature. So here, you know, it shows you the signature. So show. Signature, right? And what else? Yes, please. Sir, the, we have to click the registration button. And if okay. there is a payment, then we have to pay pay straight. Uh, wait a minute. So show the registration button. And then I would say that there is a fork here. Right? I will put a fork, put a fork over here. So there's a fork. Right? Fork is here. And why is this fork here? Because if the course is free, then it is going to show you only the register button. Otherwise, it will show you pay with Stripe button. Right? Getting me? Hello? Yes. Right? So here, yeah, it is going to show you the... So this is for free. So it is going to show it is going to show the register button. Right? And then once you press registration button, so sometimes people show this thing as, as different because this is not action. So this is square. And these action boxes, you know, they are little rounded over here. Okay. And then, you know, over here, if he presses register button, what happens is, yes, maybe. Uh, it it uh, so pop up. It shows a pop up. It shows a pop up. And email is sent, right? 
right and an email is sent and this completes the process right this completes the process so completion is shown like this bullseye something like this right so this completes the process right and if this is a paid one not free paid then it falls from here So if it is paid one, then what happens? Instead of uh, registration button, there is a paid with a stripe. There is paid with stripe button, right? Show paid with stripe button. Show pay with stripe button. And once you press pay with stripe button, Sorry. Enter details. So here, you know, there could be a waiting time. Enter details, right? Uh, sorry, press with stripe first. You know, he will press or she will press with stripe button, right? So, so there, you know, you press. Pay with stripe button, right? So once you press pay with stripe button, what is going to happen? Yes? Yeah, it is a pop up of that stripe. Stripe pop up, right? So stripe pop up will show. Right? Stripe pop up will show, right? And once stripe pop up shows, here you have the waiting time, right? Here you have the waiting time. Wait, student, enter details. Right, student will enter the details, right? And once you press the button, Once you press the button, right, what is going to happen? Once you press the button, what is going to happen? It will... Uh... Yes. It will send those details. Send to Stripe. Right? So it will send. So this is this outward arrow going is send those details to Stripe, right? Stripe will do their work, validate it, right? And then what would be the next, next step? Next step would be? You will receive those details from Stripe. Receive from Stripe, right? You will receive you know, those things from Stripe, right? That, you know, payment is good, the credit card is good, et cetera, et cetera, right? So if everything is good, so here you can have, again, a forking point. Say it is bad. So if it is bad, the bad pop-up will be shown and upon cancelling it you can go back you can go back where you go back you can go back right over here right and it will take you to that zero ground point, right? And once it is good, once it says that the payment has happened, then what are we going to show? Show pop up, 
right? Do I have that step already there somewhere? So if I go over here, right? So you show pop up and send email. So you can come from here. You can come from here. You can come from here and go right over here, right? This forking point. Uh, this gathering point, you can say. And this completes the process. So you can see that this was a small, small process, but still quite a bit complicated, right? So this is your activity diagram for this process. If you want, you can take a screenshot so that this is with you. Otherwise it would be in the video. I'm sorry for handwriting in this module, uh, but you know, my pen does not allow to write better. Zoom it. Yeah, sure. Should I slide? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is your activity diagram, right? So activity diagram is made not for everything. It is normally made for complex processes, right? If there is a complex process which you want to communicate to your developer that how exactly you think it's going to happen, right? So you make this activity diagram. Any questions so far, guys? So since I was the solo developer of this particular project, all these activity diagrams are floating in my mind, right? But we need to put them in on paper once you have more than one developer working on the same project. Got it, guys? Any question? So whether you have low funds or high funds, definitely, you know, you need to make these diagrams. Right? Any question? No, sir. Okay, great. So let me step back a little bit and let me tell you one thing. Look, this is UML. UML has three legs. One is known as interactivity model. Right? So whatever we have done so far was interactivity model. Right? Without telling you the name, I have covered one third branch of uh, UML. Right? Which was interactivity model. Right, so in interactivity model, you know, you make user stories, you took the, you take the system analysis, you survey the system, you see the requirements, right? You, you, you write user stories, you make, uh, you group those user stories, you make uh, wireframes, right? You write use cases, you give feedback of use cases to wireframes, improve them, improve your use cases, improve wireframes, iterative process, right? And then, you know, once your use cases and your wireframes are ready, you give those wireframes to your designer. Designer basically put some colors in them, put styling in them, put font sizes, how would it look beautiful, et cetera, et cetera. So designer does all these things, right? And on the other hand, you write scenarios, right? You make sequence diagrams, right? You then make activity diagram. If there is a complex process where you, where you want to transpire further. So this entire thing, this entire modeling is known as interactivity model. Got it? 
but wait a minute you cannot you're not still ready to code you cannot start coding right away right there is one more thing at least one more thing you need to make and then you can break ground with coding what is that one more thing and there is another leg of uml and that is class model right and just for the completion sake there is another uh, you know leg which is known as state model ideally you have to complete state modeling also before you break ground but i would say that make at least interactivity model and class model and then think about coding right but definitely state model is very important also but this is how i am going to uh, drive this course so i have taught you already what is interactivity model right now i will start teaching you with class modeling right and once i will uh, i would be near finishing class modeling i will definitely start uh, doing some coding with you right and as i finish the coding section at the end i will teach you state modeling because i don't want this course to be theoretical 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 and suddenly you know start coding right so basically we want to start coding as soon as possible right and that as soon as possible is going to happen once we know that what is class model have you got the idea guys where we are what are we doing right yes sir okay good very good so let's study the class model right so what is class modeling and how do we take start on it so for example if we talk about this project i have just uh, shown you the machomark.com right so you can see that as we are have gathering the system specs and everything we come across various nouns right we come across what various nouns right what are these various nouns for example one thing is student right i am a student maybe menthan is a student maybe avinash is a student maybe shriyash is a student these are all different students right maybe sanjana is a student right these are all different students so but they are they are different right so menthan's name is different then avinash's name and avinash's name is different from shriyash name you have different kids you have different addresses you have different majors you are going to register into different courses yes you have so many differences right but your template is same right your template is same right uh, what is same template right so for uh, template is like a rubber stamp right have you seen a rubber stamp before right so these days we don't see rubber stamps since this is an era of uh, electronic and electronic signature but previously we used to have rubber stamps right so that rubber stamp will well rubber stamp is not the perfect example of this thing but you have you have got the idea right so especially you can say that rubber stamp where you can have some changes also right so basically you can say this thing that you all are students but you have a same template each one of you is going to have a name each one of you is going to have a kid as long as you are in our system each one of you is going to have a kid right each one of you is going to have uh have an address right each one of you is going to have a phone number each one is going of you is going to have a major each one of you is going to have a list of classes right right so basically each one of you is going to have your current status right that whether you are 
a current student or you are uh, you are complete you have completed your degree or you have taken a break or you are you have uh, your transfers to some other uh, campus maybe so basically each one of you has various abstract things which are common various properties which are common those properties may have different values but all these properties are common to you all and there are certain common functionalities also which all of you exhibit right what are these common functionalities common functionalities are number 1 all of you can register a course all you all of you can attend a register course all of you can ask for grades all of you can send an email to your instructors all of you can send email to the university bodies all of you can uh, see your grades etc etc so there are certain attributes which are common to you all there are certain properties or attributes which are common to you all and there are certain fun functionalities which are common to you all and this commonality actually allows us to abstract you all in our system as a student right this commonality actually allows us to abstract you all to abstract you all into our system as a student what do you think are you getting me yes okay very good so basically abstraction you know is the most un underrated pillar when talking about pillars class model in class modeling we have four pillars and these four pillars are acronymed as apple pie the first one is abstraction and first and foremost this is the most powerful pillar this is the most powerful pillar of object oriented programming most underrated one also because when i will introduce to you uh, for example inheritance or polymorphism fancy ideas of inheritance and polymorphism you will feel okay 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 let me do inheritance or every time and at that time we forget this thing that the genesis and birth of object oriented programming starts with abstraction right so basically the concept of abstraction allows us to organize our code in various classes right so the concept of abstraction allows us to organize our code into various classes right so what is the class class is a collection of so we have a class so say this is a class so class we represent a class like this here we put the name of the class say for example student it is already always singular right we say student say this is our class and then we mention that what are its attributes right for example what could be the attributes of a student maybe first name it would be one and it would be a string right maybe uh and this first name okay here we write this thing also 
that either it is going to be something which is private to the class or is it a something which is not private to the class which is public so if it is minus it means that it is something which is private to the class right why why private why public i will definitely teach you this thing right so first name then every student is going to have a last name one last name it would be a string every student is going to have an id or maybe k id one so maybe it is a string also or number whatever it is every student is going to have so many different attributes and then we write what are the functionalities a student class could have a student could have what kind of functionality right so for example it can have a functionality plus mean that this is public so it has a functionality to register so this is a functionality right and so here we list all the various functionality so this is one class template right so we make a class temp template that how does this class look like so the guy deal is that uh, as we are going through the interactivity modeling right as we are going through the interactive activity modeling we come across various actors we come across various entities within our project basically these are all various nouns these are all what these are all various nouns right noun like student like faculty like admin like meta admin like promoter like registration like for example uh, subject right so all these are various nouns like kid like first name like last name like subject title like subject fee all these are names so we we list all these various names right we list all these various nouns uh, in our project and then we think about these th this thing that out of all these various nouns which one of them is a candidate to become a class like for example student must be a class because student uh, is going to have multiple nouns related to it like first name last name kid etc etc and it has some functionalities into associated with it also right so some of the nouns make uh, some of the nouns make classes and rest of the noun make the attributes of various classes right some of these nouns make classes and some of them make the attribute of all these various classes are you guys getting me please let me know if there is some confusion or there is some misunderstanding or maybe you have a question popped up in your mind dinesh you are you are okay yes professor so far okay okay ankit you are good yes sir avinash you are okay yes sir shri yash you are okay yes sir manthan you are good yes okay great so please do ask question don't hesitate right don't feel that you know i mean i would be insulted if you know i will ask question this is the graceful thing to ask question right and when i did my phd i was like uh, 42 3 years old right and uh, i would ask questions whatsoever from any of my professors some of them even younger than me right no problem right so so basically you know i was saying that we will gather all these various nouns some of these nouns you know would be uh, would have like various other nouns associated with them and those would be having some functionalities also associated with them right so they are will make classes they will make classes right and some of them would be like uh, uh the rest of them would become the attribute to these classes right like for example first name last name kid all these are going to make the attribute of these classes you guys are getting me 
Okay, so having said this thing, now we write all these various classes, right? So we start making uh, a layout of these classes, I would say, at least a layout of these classes, right? So for example, for example, I'm going to have a class with the name student. I'm going to have a class with the name faculty. I'm going to have a class with the name admin. I'm going to have a class with the name meta admin. I'm going to have a class with the name promoter. I am going to have a class with the name promo code. I'm going to have a class with the name subject. I'm going to have a class with the name, for example, uh, maybe some other thing, right? So these are all various classes which I'm going to make. Right, once I, I'm sure that I have got these classes, all these classes, which I need to make, right? So now in this case, now I'm ready for the next step. And the next step is that I am ready to, to make or show some interaction between all these various classes, right? For example, student, faculty, advisor, uh, administrator, meta admin, right? All these, so let's forget about meta admin for a minute or maybe we can have it, right? So all these have certain commonalities between them. What are these commonalities? All of them are going to have, right? All of them are going to have a name all of them are going to have an email address. All of them are going to have an ID, right? All of them are going to have several common features within them, right? So why don't we do this thing? Why don't we do this thing that we make a class with the name person? Right, we make a class with the name person, right? We make a class with the name person and put all those common things into this class person, right? For example, what are the common things? First name, last name, email address, phone number, all these things into this person class, right? And uh, maybe some common functionalities also, right? For example, every one wants to can change their password, right? So this is common functionality. So this is also here. And, and inherit from this class person to various other classes. Right, so this concept is known as inheritance, right? What is this concept? This concept is inheritance, that we have a class person and that class is going to have all the common things up there, right? And then we are inheriting from that class Right? So instead of repeating that code, which is common in all these various classes, I can put that code into one class and inherit from class to get that code. So object oriented programming, by the way, is not just, you know, uh, to make classes. The basic purpose, you know, one basic purpose of object oriented programming is definitely this that uh, we want to eliminate, not avoid, we want to eliminate the duplication of code. Right, we want to eliminate what? We want to eliminate the duplication of code, right? 
So the entire common code is going to go and sit in the person class. And then we are going to inherit from that class to student class, faculty class, admin class, and meta class. This fancy concept is known as inheritance. By the way, there might not be a concrete entity with the name person in your system. Right, because for example, thinking about the university, right, there would not be a concrete entity with the name person, right? But you can have this abstract concept over there just to contain the commonalities of all these concrete entities down there. So this concept is known as this person class can be said to be uh, an abstract class. So an abstract class would not have their instances. Whereas concrete classes, who got dropped out? Is it me? I uh, know so. Okay, so, so basically, basically the deal is that, uh, the deal is that the, all the rest of these classes are going to have instances in the system, right? So what do you mean by instance? Instance might be a fancy word, but simple as that. For example, you are all part of the university system. So in the university system, for example, Dinesh, you are an instance of student class, right? Shri Yash, you are also an instance of the student class, right? Menthan, you are also an instance of the student class, right? So every one of you, every one of you, is an instance of the student class, right? Ankit you, and uh, Avinash, all of you are instances of student class, right? I'm, I'm uh, an instance of faculty class, right? But both of us might be inheriting from a common class with the name person, right? And that class would not be a concrete class because we're never going to make instances of this person class, right? By the way, instances of a class are also known as objects. So we would never be having objects created of person class, but this class is there to hold the common, common things. Have you got the idea? Right? Any question? The first class is a concrete class, professor. Person is an abstract class. Abstract class. Okay. Abstract class. Abstract class means that uh, this class is not going to instantiate. This class is just there to uh, to hold the common features. That's right. uh, Got so it. Student and faculty are all uh, concrete classes. Right? Uh, student, faculty, admin, meta admin are concrete classes. Yes. Okay. Right, got it? Yeah, definitely these are all concrete classes, right? So let me tell you that, for example, this current project we are continuously talking about. So let me show you that how did I make the make a uh, class diagram for that, right? So say, for example, I have a person class. Let me let me take a new paper. So for example, I have, so let me let me make it reverse, right? So this is the database. Right? This is the database. And I have a class over here with the name PDO, right? This is the template class, PDO, library class. So this class is responsible uh, for the interaction with the database, right? So this is database. And then I have a class over here 
which is db object class right the class over here with this which is the db object class so basically whenever i have to store some data into db i have to make a db query right whenever i have to retrieve some data from db i have to make a db query right whenever i have to make some changes i have to do the db query db query i i can i need to do db query for students i need to do db query for faculty i need to do db query for uh, admin i need to do db query for uh, subjects so i have so many different things over here for which i need to do db query right so now one process could be that you know i write all the entire db related code uh, maybe in here and there maybe in student class maybe in uh, in person class maybe in subject class so instead of doing so what did i do here is that i have made a common class with the name db object right guys hello everybody okay so i have this db object class right and then from this db object class i am inheriting to another class which i say setter class right so which i say what which i say setter class so what i am putting in setter class so the deal here is that another pillar of object oriented programming if i zoom uh, if i go back over there another pillar of object programming uh, oriented programming is e which is encapsulation right what is encapsulation encapsulation is that the the code within the class should be waterproofed from the code outside the class right so class should encapsulate its interior right a class must encapsulate its interior that you know uh, for example uh, i i hired the nesh you that you better go ahead and uh, make student class i hired yash that hey you go ahead and make the subject class now these two classes are going to work with each other but the deal here is that the student dinesh you made the student class so yash code should not be able to disrupt your code right or your code should not be able to go and intervene with yash code right are you getting me guys so this is not security from a hacker it is a security of one part of the code from another part of the code in the sense that one part of the code should not intervene with the other part of the code and disrupt its working in this way we would not be able to understand that where is the error so we'll provide some points of interaction with the with the class and you know you would be able to interact with the class through those points of interaction i will make those point of interaction for you but you would not be able to interact in, uh, with a class uh, other than those points of interaction right so basically for in order to implement that analogy you need to have the concept of setters and getters right so this is a class where i am i put all my setters and getters are you getting me guys hello everybody yes sir right so here i am putting my setters and getters right and then from here i inherit from here further let me use blue so i inherit again from here i made a person class i made a subject class right and then i further inherit from here mm -hmm. make a student class make a faculty class 
make an admin class make a promoter class right and then made a promo code class Right, so and then they have various interactions that I will show later on. So this is the basic basic structure of code I developed for that project. Right, and now I am crystal clear about this thing that what kind of code is going to sit where. Right, and by the way, this is not end of the story. This is just beginning of the story. We have a whole MVC framework also developed for the project, and that is kind of superimposed on top of it, right? But I'm not going to take you over there because you are kind of learning this thing right now, so that will complicate the story. But for the time being, right, we can say this thing that uh, we are going to implement all these things. Right? And this is this is what we are going to code. Let me show you a glimpse of some of the classes, right? So that you can understand what I'm talking about, right? So just don't uh, try to understand the code. Just see that what is that. Okay. So let me open. So this is the project. And within the project, uh, you can see these includes. And within these includes, let, let me show you another project. This is not that well organized. So I just don't want to paint your mind with that. Uh, let, let me show you this. So for example, here you can see uh you have includes within includes you have uh models you have controllers you have views right so this is mvc structure i was talking about i'm not going to teach you this but this is normally here so we have views models so for example within models we have various data classes model means your data right view means whatever you see on the screen Controller means that that class which controls this thing that what is going to be shown, right? So we have model, view, controller, right? So we have model and here you can see, for example, we have class.user.php, right? So this is class.user.php, right? And this is required one setter class and it is telling class user extends setter. Extends mean that this user class is inheriting from setter class, right? It is inheriting from the setter class, right? And look, these are all its attributes. So every, every user is going to have an ID, a face, a name, an email, a country, a cell phone, a first name, a last name, a password, account type, user folder. User folder is that where you are going to store your data, uh, account status, right? Session ID, resource ID, game resource ID, creation date, last online date, co comment date, and comment, right? So basically all these are various things. What is your class name and your table? So what is the what is the corresponding table which is you know going to work with this class in the database its name is users right and then we have this constructor over here then we have this set face set nick these are like individual setters set email set country right and this is this is inheriting from setter class so let's go and see that what is in the setter class so this is the setter class and this is the setter class where you have universal or global getters and global setters over here, right? Common setters are all common setters and getters and testing functions, right? Test int, test string, test 
variable date, right? So all these testing functionalities are placed here, right? Test the JSON, right? And then this is inheriting, it is inheriting from where? It is inheriting from, from where? You can see DB object class, right? So if I show you this DB object class, this is the DB object class, right? So DB object class is here, right? And it has various, uh, you know, things which are there. For example, it is telling that how long could be a nick. So these are common things, right? First name, how long could be a first name? How long could be a last name? How long could be an email? This is very important because some people might be naughty. They want to break your system. So you have to prevent your system by these kind of attackers or you know naughty people, right? And then here, this is like a query, right? So this is multi updates, multi update in a table, right? Function. And this is an update to a table, right? This is init from DB, right? If you want to get initialized from DB, right? This is select from a table, right? So this, this is the select query, right? This is insert into table, right? So this is insert query, right? So all the various queries are written right over here, right? Whatever the queries we need, they are all over here in this DB object class, right? And then this is, this is where we are also invoking the PDO function right pdo function so this pdo is the interaction with database right and this is this uh, pdo function uh, class is the built in php class we are using right so this is how we organize our code so definitely you know the from uh, next class i am going to show you that how are we starting to write our code Right, because I don't want to show it today and then we'll take a break of two days because we can't, right? And then we start on, on Monday. So, but I will take this start on Monday. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask questions. So today we have covered, we completed actually our interactivity model by, by introducing to you with the activity diagram. It finished the interactivity model and then we have started the class modeling, right? And as I will teach you class modeling, I will also code with you so that you can understand that whatever being drawn over there in the class diagram, how can we correspondingly code it over here in, in, our, uh, in our code, right? Got it guys, any question? No. Right, so, so my language of choice for this course is PHP. I could have used uh, uh, JavaScript also, for example, but JavaScript, as I mentioned, that it is such a huge language and such a huge mess. <laughs> that it's very difficult to teach object-oriented concepts in it, right? So it is like this, JavaScript is like this. That if I ask you that Hindi, German, English, Chinese, all these things are mixed together in one language, right? So you can imagine what is going to happen. Some people will be speaking Chinese and they would be thinking that they are speaking this Spencer language, right? And some people would be speaking Hindi and they would be thinking that they are speaking that language. Some people will mix Hindi and English and speak a mixture of that language, right? Which normally people do, right? And they will think that they are speaking Hindi, but otherwise, you know, should Hindi people will not understand them, right? So this is exactly what has happened to JavaScript. JavaScript has a merger of so many different things that, you know, it is very difficult to teach this concept. So, I could have used C++, but C++ I have never used to, to, to make, you know, to code big projects. C++ is normally used, you know, to write some internal engines, right? So, 
and you mostly you would be knowing C++, so I don't want to reteach it. So I am teaching you PHP. How many of you know PHP actually? You know PHP, Shriyash, good. Yes. Who else knows PHP? Okay, good. This is good that you will be, you will know a new language also. And uh, since, you know, Menthon, Menthon and Ankit, you are also in web programming course also, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that is the reason that since you two are over there also, probably I thought that I will teach web programming also in PHP, but now I am using Node over there instead of PHP. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, you know, you would be having quite a bit of learning, but means that quite a bit of work also. <laughs> yes, okay. So yeah, muster up all your courage over the weekend and we'll start recording from Monday, right? Any question? No. So if there is no question, I'll stop here, but I am available for my office hours. So if you need to have me in during my office hours, you, you can stay in this conversation. Otherwise you can simply drop out. Thank you very much. Take good care of yourselves. Goodbye. Thank you, sir.